uh, to be in God's house. I'm glad and uh, so thankful for God's grace. Uh, I don't know. I know where I'd be if it wasn't for God's grace. Uh, I've thought many times, and I've said many times that uh, if I got what I deserved, I'd be in hell right now. If I got what I deserved, I'd be in jail or something like that. But by God's grace, I'm here, and I'm thankful tonight. And I've thought about all week, I guess, and especially today, last night and today, I've thought about uh, our people and uh, thought about our nation. I've thought about uh, the holiday season and how stressful it is for most people. And uh, I tell you, a lot of folks struggle during this time of year. A lot of people, uh, not just because of the holidays, uh, but a lot of people suffer right this time of year because of depression, uh, because of anxiety, because of different things like that. And I don't care what the world tells you, uh, those things are real tonight. Life is real tonight. And life will get you. Uh, and I've thought about it. There's been many times in my life that I felt like uh, that nothing I've done was, was any good, was worth a nickel. I felt like many times that uh, uh, my whole world was in chaos. Uh, my work life has been that way. My home life has been that way. I, hey, I'm just being real tonight. Everybody has problems, and everybody uh, gets to a point in their life at times it feels like that the whole world's against you. And I began to think about tonight, I thought about a man in the Bible uh, that sort of know what I'm talking about tonight. And his name was Jeremiah. We know him as the weeping prophet. That's what people's recognized him by. And, and I'll tell you, this man had a hard life. I'll, I'll just put it that way. And if you know anything about Jeremiah and you've studied about him, Jeremiah was a poor man like us. And everybody here tonight is just good old poor people. And that's the way Jeremiah was. He's a poor man. Uh, but I thought about it, and I've studied Jeremiah quite a bit. Jeremiah was forbidden to marry. Uh, Jeremiah never had any children. But Jeremiah was called of God. And God had a great job for Jeremiah to do. And as he went, and, and I'm not going to go preach the whole story of Jeremiah tonight, but as he went and he preached his heart out and he, he said the words that God told him to say, uh, it got discouraging on him. And he got depressed. And he got... Uh, to a point that at one point he wished that he had never been born. At one point he wished that uh, he had died. At one point he, he said, even said, I'm not going to preach anymore. Amen. I've been that way, Brother Carroll. I've been, Brother, uh, I've been to the point, and, I, and you can ask my wife, I've went home and I've, I've said, Amy, it ain't doing a bit of good. I'm preaching my heart out. I'm preaching just as hard as I can, and it's bouncing off the walls. Uh, they're not listening. They're not paying attention. They're not moving into it. And I threw my Bible down and said, that's it. Yeah, I'm not doing it anymore. But as Jeremiah said in the Word of God, and I'll get to where I'm going in a minute, uh, but I, I just got to get this out here tonight for some reason. But as Jer it may be to help one of these preachers tonight. And I'm thankful for all four of them here tonight. Uh, but I, I thought about this. That Jeremiah got to that place. And he said, I spake and I cried out. I cried violence was full because the word of the Lord was made a reproach unto me and a derision daily. A derision means uh, he was made a laughing stock. Everybody hit the people of Israel. A life at this man. They made fun of this man and they got him to the point and where he said this, Then said I, I'll not make mention of him uh, nor speak, speak any more in his name. Yeah. But, there's a butt in there. And I tell you, I've been like that too. I've thrown it down and said I ain't doing it no more. Yes. But, his word was right in my heart. His word is what kept me going. His word is what keeps me coming back every Sunday, every Sunday night, every Thursday night. His word is what keeps me on my knee. His word's what keeps my nose in this Bible right here. Lord, I'll tell you, I know this time of year is hard. I know that people are struggling and people are down and depressed. But I'm so thankful tonight that his word is alive tonight. I'm so thankful. His word will keep us moving. Amen, brother. It will happen. Amen. I tell you, I, I just don't even want to preach on tonight. 
But I am going along with the same thing. I want to turn with you to Lamentations chapter number 3 tonight. I'm going to read two or three verses of Scripture and I'm going to get out of the way and let God have His way. And I, I hope that this helps you tonight. I hope that this is current. I know I've thought about it like this and I've thought about everybody in this church at some point through this week. I read everybody, even the visitors that's here tonight. I've thought about you at some point uh, during this week and I'll tell you, I prayed for you because uh, I, I really feel like somebody tonight is at the point they're ready to give up. I really feel like tonight somebody is at the point they're willing to say, like they're ready to say, that's it, God. I ain't doing it no more. It ain't working. I'm praying. I'm preaching. I'm studying. I'm looking to you. And it ain't doing any good. And you're ready to just throw up your hands and quit. I'm tired of going to church, Lord. It ain't doing no good. I'm tired of doing this. I'm tired of doing that. It ain't doing good. I've been there. Amen. I've truly been there tonight. I'll tell you Lamentations chapter number 3. I'm going to start reading at verse 18. He said, And I said, My strength and my hope is perished from the Lord. My hope's gone. Have you ever felt like that? I'm hopeless. I'm hopeless. I'm down as low as I can go. I'm down in the bottom of the pit. I'm down I'm just as low as I've ever been. And he said, Remember my affliction and my misery, the wormwood and gall, and my soul had uh, them still in remembrance, and this humbled in me. And then he said, This I recall to my mind, therefore I have hope. Uh, listen to me tonight, brother. You uh, may be at that point. You may uh, be like he said in verse 18, that my strength and my hope is gone. I'm going to tell you, I ain't got a bit of strength in Rocky Ball. Uh, you ain't got a bit of strength in yourself tonight. Uh, there's not, not any hope in Rocky but what God's got, I'm glad His Word uh, sets my heart on fire. I'm glad His Word uh, burns within me. You say, preacher, what are you talking about? Uh, you remember in the Bible, after our Lord and our Savior was resurrected, uh, there was two men and they were on their way to Emmaus. They Luke chapter in the book of Luke and they were on their way to Emmaus. And they was talking about what had happened. Uh, they were talking about what had went on with the Lord. How that He had died. Uh, crucified on the cross and, and all the things that led up to it. And while they were walking, the Lord appeared there with them and began to talk with them. And brother, they had questioned them a little bit. And the Bible said he opened up the scripture and he expounded all the scriptures concerning himself. And brother, I'll tell you, that when he did, the Bible said, after he had departed, they said, that did not our heart burn within us. And while he opened up the scripture my friend, if the Word of God they don't set your heart on fire, yeah. there's something wrong with you tonight. Amen. Amen. I tell you, this is meat to my soul tonight. This is what gets me going and keeps me going tonight. Amen. There's hope. Amen. There's hope tonight. You know what hope means? Hope means to fully trust in. It means to look for. And it means to wait on. Let get that. To look to, uh, to look for, in other words, and to wait on. I believe it's time that we wait on the Lord tonight. Amen. Too many of us, and I've been guilty of it, I've tried to get ahead of it. And every time I've tried to get ahead of the Lord, it's when that depression comes. It's when that hopelessness comes. It's when that helplessness comes. Because I can't do anything on my own. You can't do anything on your own. But I'm going to go on through this. This I recall in my mind. Therefore, I have I hope it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. Because His compassions fail not. Compassion fails not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The word is my por the Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore, will I I hope in him. The Lord is good unto them and that wait for, uh, listen to them, that wait for him to the soul uh, that seeketh him. Brother, I'll tell you, I don't know what you're going through in your life. I really don't tonight. Uh, but I know it's studying this right here in the book of Lamentation, uh, chapter number one and chapter number two. Uh, you find the children of Israel, they're suffering. Uh, they've got affliction. They've got faith. And uh, that's coming on them. The very word uh, tonight, Lamentation, means to cry 
smile. It means to be sorrowful. It means to hurt for somebody else. And that's why Jeremiah had the, the nickname, so to speak, as the weeping prophet. Uh, brother, because he cared for the people so much. It troubled him that uh, they was in the trouble they were in. It troubled him that he would preach and then make fun of him. It troubled him that he'd preach and then turn a deaf ear to it. Uh, you can't find anywhere in the book of Jeremiah or Lamentations in the one uh, where he ever saw anybody repent, uh, where he ever saw anybody come and move to what he said. All they ever done uh, was put the old man of God down. Amen. And he was hopeless. Amen. And he prayed to die. And he prayed, Lord, it would have been better if I'd have never been born. But we find in verse that I want to preach on for just a minute, on verses number 20 through 25. My soul hath them still in remembrance and is humbled in me. This I recall to my mind. Therefore have I hope. Church, we've got hope. You may feel like you don't tonight, but you've got hope. How do you have hope? What do we have hope in? Uh, what are we going to hope in? I, he tells us plain here. It's of the Lord's mercy. I'm thankful tonight uh, for God's mercy and His mercy enduring forever. If it was not for the mercy of the Lord, my friend, I wouldn't be here. I, you wouldn't be here tonight. Uh, but God has been merciful to this old preacher. Uh, God has been there for me time and time again. And I, uh, I, I said not long ago, I think mean, even gotten myself and I've got myself in trouble and God's mercy has even come and got me out of that trouble and God uh, loves you tonight God uh, cares for you tonight you say preacher I don't feel like there's a soul loves me I don't feel like anybody cares for me I don't feel like anybody loves me tonight I'll promise you tonight uh, the king of glory loves you tonight if he didn't love the Bible I uh, wouldn't have told us that in John 3 16 for God shall love the world and then he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believe in him should not perish, but I have everlasting life. Romans 5 and 8. But God commended, God give his love. In other words, God commended his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for me. What's that mean, preacher? While God knew I was going to be hitting them bars several years ago, God knows I was going to be a whoremonger. God knows I was going to be a gambler. God knows. I was going to be a dope head. But he still loved me. Amen. 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 And it's by his mercies that I'm here tonight. Grace means, the very definition of grace means unmerited favor. Yes. Something you didn't deserve. I'm this whole country boy. And I've always explained it like this. Grace is what God didn't do to me when I deserved favor. Amen. Amen. And, and brother God, mercy is what he don't do to me uh, when I deserve hell. Yeah. Amen. God has been good to this old preacher right here. Uh, God's blessed me and I'm putting my hope in him tonight. Uh, yes, life is hard. Yes, life is troublesome. Like you're going to have problems in the flesh. You're going to face things that you don't want to face. You're going to come against people that you don't want to come against. But his mercy is real today. Yes. I'm putting my hope in him. Amen. Paul teaches us to have that blessed hope in the glorious appearing of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And I'll tell you, that's where my hope's at tonight, Vernon. I love you dearly, but my hope ain't in you. I love my wife dearly sitting back here, but my hope is not in Amy. Uh, my hope is in the King of glory. My hope is in the Lord of lords, uh, the King of kings, the one uh, that hung between the heavens and the earth, and he gave his life for me. Uh, my only hope uh, for my children tonight is in this man, Jesus. Wayne, your only hope for your son is in Jesus tonight. That's it. My hope is in him. The Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. I'll tell you, if it wasn't for His mercy, this world would consume me. This world would consume you. But I'm not of this world. So I've got a, I've got a Father. I've got somebody watch on my side tonight, in other words. And His mercies keeps me from getting consumed. His mercy, brother, I'll tell you, that ought to be shouting ground tonight, church. 
the mercies of God, we ought to be shouting from the uh, rooftops tonight. It's by His mercy. Uh, some of you sisters come and pray with her tonight. And they uh, listen to this and His mercy because His compassion uh, fail not. His compassion, His love for you and I. Uh, brother, His tender mercies tonight. That's where it's at, my friend. I'm putting my hope in Him. I'm putting my hope in Him tonight. I'm putting my hope in His mercy. I'm putting my hope in His compassion tonight. I'm putting my hope in, go on down in His faithfulness, brother. I'll tell you, I've not always been faithful to Him, but He's always been faithful to me. Amen, amen. There's been many times I've backed up. There's been many times I've stepped sideways, but He has always been faithful to me. That's where my hope's at. That's where Jeremiah's hope was at. That's what he was talking about, brother. I'll tell you, over in Jeremiah chapter 20 when I read a while ago, brother, that's what lit that fire in his heart. That's where the word, the fire of the word of God is, brother. It's in that compassion, that mercy, and his faithfulness. He's faithful. I don't care what you've done in your life. He's faithful and just if you'll repent, if you'll call on him. He's faithful to save you. He's faithful to forgive you. If we'll come to Him with a broken heart and a contrite spirit, and we'll call on Him, brother, He'll save you tonight. He'll, he'll, he'll renew you tonight. And you say, preacher, I've been saved. I'm just not where I need to be with the Lord. But with a shame on you, get where you need to be with the Lord tonight. You say, preacher, I can't lay this down. I can't lay that down. I've had people ask me, and I said it. How do I quit, my, how do I quit playing the lottery? Quit my tickets. Amen. Just quit it. You want to quit drinking? Quit buying it. Amen. You want to quit smoking? Quit smoking. Don't, don't buy a pack. Don't go to the pot store if you don't want to smoke it. Amen. If you want to quit sin, quit it tonight. And say right now, I'm going on for holiness. I'm going on for my Lord. Why? He's faithful. He's faithful to us. His compassion, He's kept me from getting consumed. His mercies. I don't know why I had to preach this tonight. I don't know why I went this way. I'll tell you, I wanted to give, turn one of these brothers loose tonight. But don't give up. Whatever you're going through, don't give up. I've seen many people that's come and they... Uh, they come to church for years at a time and, and they prayed for something. They prayed for their children. They prayed for this person or that person. And I, I believe with all my heart uh, that God was fixing an answer and God was fixing a, a deliverer. And all of a sudden they give up. They quit church. They go in their own way. And I believe that God was just fixing a move. Yeah. But they quit. Galatians chapter number 6. In verse 9, I'm just going to turn it over and read it real quick. And everybody knows it and I could quote it, but I don't want to misquote it tonight. Uh, he said the Word of God. He said, let us not be weary. Don't be discouraged. Don't get down. Don't uh, let the things of this world get you down. In other words, in well doing, for in due season, we shall reap. We shall reap. If. Two little words. If. We faint not. If we don't give up, if we don't quit, if uh, we keep going, hey, I, I said it not long ago. I got to the point that I was ready to give up on my dad. I was ready to quit praying for him. And the more I pray, and the more he cussed me, the more I pray, it seemed like the meaner he got. And I said, Lord, that's it. I ain't praying for him not another time. That's what I said to the Lord. That was awful. Arrogant of me, wasn't it? And I'll tell you, when I did, that fire of God spoke to my heart. And he said, the devil ain't going to give up on him. The devil's going to keep working on him. And what's that leading if you quit praying for him? Amen. Amen. I had to repent and I had to pray and ask God to forgive me and I, I kept praying for him and I it wasn't six months after that I seen my daddy get right with God he went to the Lord went home to be with the Lord not long after that but if I had quit praying he'd have busted hell wide open amen, amen. amen. don't give up tonight amen. you say preacher I don't want to fight anymore it's a battle at home. It's a battle at work. It's a battle everywhere I go. 
Don't give up. No. Keep fighting. No. Paul told the church at Rome. He said, for I reckon that the sufferings of this no. present time are not worthy to be compared unto the glory which shall be revealed in us. I said, keep on, my friend. Don't back up now. I'm telling you, God's wanting to do a work at Mount Olive Baptist Church. God's wanting to bless us. And God's wanting to expand and, and move in this community. He's wanting to save and He's wanting people to get right. He's wanting people to repent, take up their cross, and get closer than they've ever been. Amen. But if we shut the doors and we quit right now, guess what? It'll never happen. Amen. But if we'll keep moving, if we'll let the fire of God burn in our hearts, yes. if we'll let the mercies of God, we'll let the compassion of God, and we'll let the faithfulness of God Yes. Move in this church, I'm telling you, we'll be a powerhouse. Amen. 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 I've said it many times. Years ago, when me and Amy first got in church, people said it about two churches in Cock County. They'd say, if you don't want to get saved, don't go to either one of them churches. Because the power of God's there. I want them to say that about Amen. Mount Olive. Amen. I want this world to recognize that the power of God is right here. Amen. This is God's house. And it needs to be here. God's power needs to be here. But if we give up, what, what then? Another place, Jeremiah asked a question. He said, what should I do now? We've come to a place. What should we do now, church? Should we just continue going through the motions? Should we continue coming in, singing three songs, turning the preacher loose and going to the house. What shall we do now? We're at the Red Sea. I've used this time and time again, but I'll use it tonight too. We're at the Red Sea tonight. When Moses brought the children of Israel out of Egypt and Pharaoh and his army was behind them, they went as far as they could go. And they were standing at the Red Sea. That's where we're at. And we're looking and there's no, we can't go any farther. The seas are in front of us. We turn around and we see all the troubles. We see all the things uh, from the past that's coming behind us. I'm telling you, if you'll let it tonight, your past will cripple you. It'll cripple you. Hey, the devil will throw it up at you. The devil will try to hinder you with it. Uh, but God will never bring it up to you again once you're under the blood. He's tried to cripple me with it. He's tried to make me feel that high from my past before. But thank God, it's under the blood. It's under the blood. He can't do nothing with that. And I'll tell you, when I take him to that altar, the night that I got born again and accepted Christ into my heart, he has to flee. Amen. Amen. But we're at the Red Sea. As the children of Israel was there, they had three choices. They could make. They could stay right there. And every one of them was murmuring to the preacher. What do we do, preacher? You could have, well, you could have left us back there. We wouldn't be going through this now. I think back burning until August of, of last year where we was at. Right, we could have stayed there. We could have went through the motions and we could have stayed there. But we didn't. Thank God we didn't. We moved and we're at that Red Sea tonight. So what are we going to do? Are we going to stay right there? If we do, Pharaoh and his army is right behind us. And they're going to overtake us. We can turn around and we can go back to Egypt ourselves. And we can do that. But it's our, it's our choice tonight. If we do that, we're going back under bondage. If we do that... <coughs> Pharaoh would have certainly killed them. If we stay where we're at, Pharaoh will certainly kill us tonight. So what are we going to do? We're going to do what Jeremiah said right here. We're going to wait on the Lord. And you know what happened when they did? Uh, Moses standing there and he held up that rod and he said, Stand still 
and see the salvation of the Lord. And brother, when he did, there's a strong east wind came and those waters began to part. And there was a wall on this side and a wall on that side. And they went across on dry land that day. Are we ready to cross over? Are we ready to move forward? Or are we going to stay right here? Are we going to stay hopeless? Are we going to stay helpless? Are we going to stay in distress? Are we going to stay uh, depressed and, and full of anxiety? Or are we going to move forward with the Lord? Amen. There's hope in the Lord. Amen. That's where my hope's at, church. That's where my hope's at. That's where uh, when troubles come, and just because I'm, I'm a preacher, and these other preachers will tell you the same thing, but just because I'm a preacher don't mean that I don't have problems. It don't mean that our finances don't get like under attack. It don't mean that, uh, brother, that the devil ain't going to show up at work. It don't mean that the devil ain't, ain't going to get in the home and get uh, me and Amy arguing at one another. It's going to do that from time to time. But my hope, is in the Lord. Amen. And I'm looking to His mercies. I'm looking to His compassion tonight. And I'm looking for His faithfulness. And I'm looking for that to Him for the church too. Amen. To take Amen. us across where He wants us to be. Are we ready to go? If you're here tonight, you're not ready to move forward. You're just going to sit there and you're going to drive it. Amen. Amen. I've said it time and time again. If you're not moving forward, you're backslid. If you're not growing, you're backslid. If you're not winning souls, you're backslid. Get right with God tonight. And say to, you, and say to the Lord, tell the Lord, say purpose in your heart. I'm going forward. Listen, God's wanting to move the church forward. And I believe we've got people here that's ready to move forward with us. Something I, I, we can't do it sitting on our hands. We can't do it sitting still. We've got to press forward. We can't give up because times get hard. Amen. We can't give up because the devil yells boo. Amen. We can't give up because Jezebel pops her head up and says she's going to kill us. Like Elijah did. Elijah came out of a great revival. Jezebel said, I'm going to kill that dude too. And I'm just using my word. And brother, it scared him to death. He took off running and went and hid in the cave. Now is not the time to hide in the cave. Amen. Now is not the time to hide under the juniper tree. Now is the time to move forward. Amen. Amen. Are we ready? Are we ready to let the Lord move us? I'm going to read one. I'm going to read one more verse. We've turned right to it. This is the thing right here, and I, this hit me, and it goes right along with it. There have been many times in my life I've said, I'm going to go to work for the Lord. I, there's been many times in a pulpit I've beckoned out to the people, let's move and go to work for the Lord. God showed me something. I guess it's Monday night as I was studying. It's in Philippians chapter 2, verse 13. For it is God which worketh in you. God's not wanting me to go to work for Him. God's not wanting you to go to work for Him. God's wanting you to let Him work through you. Amen. Amen. Get that. God is wanting to work through me. I can't do anything. Everything I'll do, I will mess up. Everything you do, you will mess up. So let Him work in us. Let Him take us through that Red Sea. Let Him take you through this depression, through this hard time. And hey, those times that I felt like that looked like tomorrow had never come. Looked like that too many bills and not enough money. Looked like that everybody in the community, everybody in your family, everybody in the church was against you. I felt like that. I've come out behind the pulpit, even here, and it ain't nobody's fault here, it's mine. Uh, for letting the devil get in my ear, I'd walk out the door and, th and say, you made everybody mad. They all hate you now. Oh, and if I'd have listened to him, I'd have never come back. Yeah. But I want him to work through me. I want him to work through you. And let's go forward. I can get you a song. Everybody stand tonight.